Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Network. Welcome, everybody, to the Lazy Geeks Podcast, our weekly news podcast to discuss news that interests us from the past week. This is for the week of February 19th, 2017. I uh, want to first start off, forgive my voice, I'm not sure what the hell is happening to it, <laughs> um, but it's just started kind of acting up today while I was at work, so I'm not exactly sure what the hell's going on there, but anyway, I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley. All right. All right, all right. As Matthew McConaughey would say, all right, all right, all right. Oh, for, all right, all right, all right. Before, before we get into um, uh, the show, I wanted to just throw this out there as an alert for all of you. If you fall down that rabbit hole on YouTube like I do, and you know Boom. you start watching those like conspiracy documentaries or documentaries that are supposed to be telling you the truth, um, if you ever come across one and it's uses the certain adjectives like revered, guerrilla journalist, truther, um, advocate for the truth, and they're all associated with Alex Jones, turn it off. Turn it off right. immediately. You know what's funny? You texted me that today. And, it, and <laughs> I texted you in the car. And I forgot my phone did this. So I'm listening to music on Spotify. Uh, it's the only thing my phone does right. <laughs> Windows phone. Well, because because they do and Spotify the, through like toasters as well. So it's like, you know, it's right. through everything. And it goes, it goes, Donna, and the music dims. And it says, Stephen Vargas has texted you. Do you wish to read it or ignore it? I said, read it. She reads me the text and then lets me respond by voice. I was like, yeah, the future is now. Okay. <laughs> Just so convenient. Just so convenient. <laughs> but yeah, because that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was noticing. Like, because you know, we're looking through those, and they would always go like, "Yeah, revered reporter, you know, investigative journalist Alex Jones." I was like, "Okay, okay, no." <laughs> Let's just. But I'm gonna need you to. I'm gonna need you to calm that all the way down. Okay. <laughs> I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's how I know it loses its um." It loses its credibility. So I just wanted to throw that as a public service announcement to all of you. So, uh, thank you. Yeah. So tabletop <laughs> RPGs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I've been, um, I used to play Dungeons and Dragons when I was younger and you know, you just, you just stop playing cause there's no one to play with or just, you just forget about it. You realize you have no Always, friends. Right. You know, well, now I have built-in friends because I have children. So <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let me let me put some feelers out. Let me see. Let me see how they feel about doing this. You know. So then I realized that explaining Dungeons and Dragons to someone who's never seen it or played it, y- you might as well be explaining rocket scientists to a fucking mouse. Cold like they, vision. <laughs> the the looks of huh? Like all the time. <laughs> So I finally I found some videos and I was showing them and you know using that Chromecast and shit got it up on a big TV, and I and I basically told them it's a, it's a game of imagination. You sit around the table and and you can do anything. There's no limitations. I will make it work, you know. And they go, oh, so they're all stoked about. It. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go online and I'm like, I'm gonna get Dungeons and Dragons books. Yeah, well, Dungeons and Dragons is a little expensive. <laughs> I was like, God damn. Because I don't, I still don't know. Like they could play it and go, oh, I'm not really into it. That's fine, right? You know. So I'm like, I don't want to invest that much money. And they have the free rules and stuff, but I ain't about that life. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I, I want, I want some real shit. So I found this other RPG, and it's weird. There's this whole thing going on. It's open source, 
like games basically they'll make they'll make the game system and then you can edit it you can do whatever you want you know and there's a whole license around it it kind of reminds me a lot like linux um in licensing and this one and <laughs> the name is not very inventive but they named it basic fantasy so um essentially this is emulates, that a game or is that like porn because I mean, it kind of goes out of the way listen it's whatever you want it to be <laughs> no it's um the interesting thing about it is it, it emulates an old school kind of dungeons and dragons it was like second edition like it's more it's it's what they call rules light so it's <laughs> not like dungeons and dragons has become you buy the the two main books so you have the player's guide the player's manual the dungeon master manual and then you'll have the monster manual if you want to get crazy and then there's other books there's rules compendiums and there's fucking other books that add more rules and books about rules and like <laughs> and it's it sounds lame but it can be um it's auto um it's gonna be it's gonna be fun but there's a lot of prep work now because because really only the the DM or the or the GM needs to know the person running the game needs to know the rules. The other ones will figure it out. So there's another thing. I'm like, fuck. I'm gonna have to pour over this book, you know. And I was like, you know what? Let's check out this Basic Fantasy. Basic Fantasy is legit. Um, you can download the entire game for free. The the um books on the website. So the main the players slash dungeon master guide because they're the same book. You can download their monster. They call it the field guide. Um, and all the adventures that they made for them too, or campaigns are free. So I'm like, oh shit. But I wanted, you know, a little hardcover stuff uh, or books so I could read it and not be sitting in front of my computer. So they sell it at cost. So you go to Amazon and the book's five bucks. You know, I'm like, this is this is out of control. Because then if the kids if the kids get into it, I can I can theoretically buy them all a copy of the book. Right. So they can, you know, learn the rules by themselves. Um, so I've been getting this together. I bought the dice. I bought the books. I, I got my little Dungeon Masters binder put together with some extra shit. Like this this has been my life for a week and a half. Just constant gaming prep. I'm, I'm getting a fucking – getting miniatures together, everything. It's going to be the dopest fucking thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Super excited about it. And I just kind of wanted to throw a little plug out for Basic Fantasy. Um, if you've been thinking about, like, if you heard about Dungeons and Dragons, you want to get into it, or if you if you're a longtime player and you're just like, damn, I, I want that old school feel. You know what I mean? Like something a little because because it, it's old school, but they modernized a few things that needed to be modernized, right. like old old math and stuff like that. Um, now it's all in Common Core. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and they simplified a few things, stuff like that. If you ever, if you want to check it out, definitely go to basicfantasy.org. Um, they have a huge community that's constantly making things and adding to the game. And the, the game's made by one guy. Um, let me, well, he, this one guy invented it. It's not just one guy making <laughs> <laughs> making everything. That'd be a little weird. Let me see. Oh, fuck, his name is not on the front page. Oh yes, it is Chris Gonerman. Um, so yeah, basicfantasy.org. Um, the forums are dope. They have all kinds of people have added classes, races, equipment. They make their own adventures, and they have a whole like kind of uh, system in the forums too, where it's like, oh, I'm testing this, and then you'll see there's like a yellow line over it that says um, under construction. Or there'll be another line that says play tested, which people have played it and it's sound and it works. And they're like, okay, cool. And you can download that shit. You know, it's, it's just dope. So just throwing it out for the extra nerdy motherfuckers that be listening. <laughs> get your minds right. <laughs> Basically, get yourselves right with God is really what it's going to be. That's right. To. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's funny you bring up D&D because &D, uh, I started over the weekend. I binge watched... Uh, Stranger Things. Right. Show was, I mean, I had, you know, it came out what last year and like I saw all these people writing about it and stuff like that. And I watched the first episode and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then, of course, life happened and, you know, fell off of it. Um, but, you know, I saw the tr trailer for season two in, um, on the Super Bowl 
And then I was like, God, I should really watch it. And my brother was kind of interested in it. So I'm like, so on one night I was like, you want to check it out? And he's like, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead. So we watched two episodes and at the end we were like, fuck, that was cool. Then the next night we watched two more. It's only eight episodes long. So we got, you know, two more. And then on Saturday night, we both, I worked, but I was off early and he was off early. So it's like seven o'clock. I'm like, hey, should I throw on, uh, throw on Strange Things? He goes, yeah. Boom, we were done by 11 o'clock. We were like, fuck, those episodes seem short. <laughs> I've heard nothing but good things. It's really good. The casting in that show was phenomenal. Winona Ryder is so good. Uh, Matthew Modine is such a dick. Um, but all the the kids are really good. The teenagers are good. Like, it's cool because it starts, it's, it has three different threads through the whole show. And then finally, towards the end, they start to come together. Um, it really kind of go. it's takes place in 1983. Um, and it opens with the kids playing, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, super nerdy kids. Um, but, you know, they have like, you know, they're into um, one of the kids disappears and he's into, you know, he was into music and, you know, like people into Star Wars and, and, and Jaws and things like that. And it was just it was just a really well paced and well written series. I was right. I was really, really impressed with it. Um, I'm looking forward to season two. I'll probably end up watching season one again just before two comes out. But um, it was really cool. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um it does tie up a lot, but then also kind of leaves the threads for next season. So it'll it'll definitely be interesting when it comes back. But uh, but I, I definitely enjoyed it a lot. So if you've been one of those where you're like, well, I don't really listen to, you know, watch things that everybody talks about, do check it out. Because if you're, it really felt like those, you know, when you, uh, well, for those of you that grew up in the 80s, those movies that kind of was centric on, you know, kids figuring out the situation, the government being the enemy, it falls on that. It's not grotesque or, you know, gory in any way or out for like, you know, jump factors, none of that, but it's freaky. Like it plays with your mind. And, um, and I, I really dug that. I was, it was, it was just enough twists at every episode that kept you going. Um, but, I like the fact that it was eight episodes because I think in this kind of show, if it went to 13, it's the middle where you start to lose people because you're just yeah. kind of having that, you know, stories just to, to get people to hang in there till the end. I thought this was a perfect, uh, 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 a perfect number of episodes. So if you haven't checked it out, do, like I said, it's on Netflix. Really, really great stuff. You'll enjoy it. Will I? I think you will. Oh, okay. I think I think you'll actually you'll actually appreciate it a bit. But will I though? I think you will. It's like nah, he's just being dicks. So. <laughs> uh, uh, but that rain though. Um. Yeah, California went through uh, <laughs> some shit. Well, uh, northern Northern California is still going through some shit right now. Um, Oroville has that dam that they keep trying to release water to keep it from overflowing. They have an evacuate, evacuation order in this uh, Manteca, which is up in Northern California, because um, some place are going to overflow their banks there. Where I live in L.A., five and a half inches of rain in one day. Shit. Yeah. We haven't had that for like, what was it, 13 years was the last time we had that kind of rain. Um, yeah, it was fucking crazy here. If you guys have seen the news, I mean, we had sinkholes popping up over here, you know, just flooding and, and they closed down the, the five at some point because it got so deep. Water was flooding into cars and shit. It got crazy out here. Arizona, not so much. <laughs> um, So Arizona had its own version. So <laughs> the storm, the storm itself um, came here. Uh, much like a lot of storms in California that come off the ocean, they end up over here. Um, it wasn't bad at all. Um, and uh, the biggest problem in Arizona we get with storms is wind. Like the rain we can deal with, but all of a sudden it's like this fucking hell wind that comes. And then it, it looks like it's raining up. 
That like, you're like, what the fuck? We had that too. And, right. And we didn't have that that much. The one thing, though, is that it it's just wouldn't stop fucking raining. Yeah. Like, it, it was just dumping and dumping. And, and there was a little bit of flooding. Nothing too bad, though, because it was a moderate rain. But Arizona's ground is not designed for rain. It's like cement, <laughs> you know? So after a period of time, like, the, the lines for my internet, for instance, they, um, they flooded over. My internet went out for a few hours. Like, it was out till, like, midnight until the water cleared. Because one thing about Arizona, once it stops raining, instant evaporation. Everything's just start going, <laughs> just melting back into the sky. Um, so, but it was enough where I could tell it was bad yeah. in, uh, in in California. Like, I was like, fuck, it was no joke in California. Like, I can, I can tell right away. You know, so, I'm glad you survived. Yeah, it was, it was fucking crazy. Like, it was, it was the bad wind where so many people's umbrellas got destroyed um but like an umbrella was kind of fruitless Not the umbrellas because <laughs> it was like because it was fruitless like i was just going up the block to get into work and it was just like anything that covered my head which was my umbrella was fine anything outside of that was wet right. so it was just like everything from the waist down you know was just completely wet it was ridiculous but I mean, I was I was at work and we look out the I hear somebody go oh my god and you look out the window and literally the it's going sideways, the wind's blowing so hard you're seeing it whip the water off people's roofs, it was just like this is fucking wild like we've never had that before, but it was crazy like it was yeah kind of how our our monsoon season is here yeah. like it gets really nuts and everybody freaks out <laughs> because <laughs> no one like that's the only time it really rains. Right. It was like, fuck, <laughs> we're all going to fucking die, bro. Like, you know, you see that news feed video, that news feed video, BuzzFeed, I'm sorry, BuzzFeed video of like rain in LA and people freak out when it rains. And it's like, I've seen this before. Just wait a second. And then it stops. This wasn't that. Like, this was an actual like storm watch kind of deal. I mean, you know, so it was, it was crazy. Like we had sinkholes popping up, um, uh, some guy, some like 50 year old dude was killed. He was walking down the street and a, and a power pole fell over because of the wind and rain. Yeah. Um, they don't know if he came in contact with the wires or if the wires electrified the water, but oh, shit. yeah, but he got, he got fried. So it was just like, <clears throat> and it was weird. Cause it like, <laughs> it was like some, like of the craziest shit in some like some places down in North Hollywood, your like cars were stalling out because the water got so deep. Yeah, it was it was pretty intense. So, yeah, so I stayed home that weekend. <laughs> right, <laughs> as you should, as you should, right. Uh, all right, so we survived that. So I guess now we should go into our one awesome thing. Of course. So my one awesome thing is in honor of the um, release of. Doctor Strange on um, HD digi dig digital HD, and I think next week on Blu-ray, they released a part two of Thor and Daryl. For those of you that may not remember, during Comic Con they released a video of where Thor was during Civil War, and he was hanging out with Daryl in Australia. Uh, so now they continue this story with basically Daryl saying. Um, I can't pay rent with these. And there's a bunch of, you know, um, Norse trinkets and stuff like that. And Thor's there in, you know, um, surfer shorts and a bike. And he's like, he's like, these are worth a bazillion of your dollars. See, there you are. You're a bazillionaire. Oh, and another bazillion and another bazillion. <laughs> and he's like, nobody's gonna, you know, gonna pay for these. And, he, and basically the end of the scene is <laughs> Thor going, he goes, you're not using your brain, and your brain is a muscle. Like, this is a muscle, and this is a muscle. He starts flexing, showing off all the muscles he has, <laughs> and saying that he has more brains than Daryl does, and that they should get a servant. <laughs> right. Um, it's it's hilarious, because it's kind of like, I kind of wonder, like, is Daryl going to be in the Thor movie? Like, is there going to be a moment there with him? There uh, has to be. There has to be. I mean, so... 
uh so yeah you can check out the link in the if you haven't already seen you can check out the link um or just go to our youtube page it's on um our movie trailer playlist it's 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 pretty funny i love the original so this should this one should be fun so this is this is a quick one but look yes. we ain't playing around now yes now this this had already been announced but let's just cut to the chase crash bandicoot and dot same trilogy it's yes. already been announced, but now we have a release date. PlayStation 4, June 30th. Still a bit of a wait. And we got a price. It's going to cost $39.96. Now, why is it going to cost $39.96, you might ask? Um, well, I ask, you know, I ask. 40, 40 bucks. Right. We have remastered editions of the original Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot Warped. That's three games, bro. Bruh. Okay. Bruh. According according to Activision, the remaster offers redone lighting and animations, newly recreated cinematics, and support for the PlayStation 4 Pro. Bruh. The Insane Trilogy also adds new save and checkpoint systems because let's be honest, the new gamers ain't about that light. Right. Like they, they, they can't handle that shit. Mm-mm. And improved bonus levels and time trials. The soundtrack has also been remastered. Let's make sure they keep the original soundtrack though and just remaster. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they will. I'm pretty sure they will. Don't want no damn remixes and (laughs) shit. Remix. (laughs) A trilogy of Crash Bandicoot remasters was announced at Sony's E3. Yes, it was. So this game was originally on all three of these games. Yeah. Originally on the first PlayStation, which they now refer to as the PSX. Um, Jesus. I have. This I think is, I have warped. I think I have warped on my PlayStation One. I think I do too. I have one of them. I think it's. I think I have the third one. Yeah, warped. That's the cool one where you you're in like a center room and you just jump into the, almost like Mario sixty four. Right. But um, so for those who don't know, Crash Bandicoot is basically was Sony Sonic or Sony's Mario. Right. It was their mascot. And it kind of fell to the wayside. There was there's a big story behind it that I don't remember enough detail about to go into, but a lot of like copyright rights and, and the people who were making it were acting foolish, just, just stuff like that. But he's back, and and we can all we can all bet that if this trilogy sells well, you know they're gonna make some new fresh fresh games. Oh yeah, they have to. Yep. These games were so fun, dude. I, I love still these games. I still remember the Undiga. Yeah, <laughs> every time you got a mask. Yeah, that Unica. <laughs> that will, I love that. I love those games. That's gonna be fun. I know what I'm. I know what I'm getting. <laughs> All right. So on that note, I think it's time we uh, jump into the headlines. One of the major problems with Sony, particularly their PlayStation brand, is that you never quite know how long it's going to be around. After Sony decided to release their PlayStation Now service, uh, which allowed players to stream PlayStation 3 games on their PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, PlayStation TV, and various models of TVs, Blu-rays, and toasters, they will no longer be supporting it on any except two. In a blog post, Sony announced that starting August 15th, they will no longer be offering the service on all of the following devices. PlayStation 3, PlayStation Vita, the PlayStation TV, all 2013, 14, 15 Sony Bravia TV models, all Sony Blu-ray player models, all Samsung TV models. On April 1st, they will discontinue support for all 2016 models of Sony Bravia TVs. Keep in mind, if you purchased any of these non-gaming related items for the PlayStation Now service, you just completely got screwed. Then again, what... (laughs) <laughs> Would anyone expect anything different from Sony? Quote, After thoughtful consideration, we decided to focus our... our sh- um, sh- uh, we decided to shift our focus and resources to PlayStation 4 and Windows PC to further develop and improve the user experience on these two devices, the blog post reads. This move puts us in the best position to grow the service even further. If you use any of the above services, we want to give you our heartfelt thanks for your support and we'll hope you continue with us. Remember that all of your PS Now cloud game saves can't easily be accessed on both the PlayStation 4 and the Windows PC. 
If you do not wish to continue your subscri subscription, please remember to disable auto renewal in your account settings so that your account ends by April 1st, 2017 on 2016 Sony Bravia TVs and August 15th on all other devices. For three months subscribers, depending on when you join the service, your subscription may auto renew a month or two before the service discontinued discontinuation date if you do not turn it off. It's not a surprise that Sony has given up on mass marketing of their PlayStation Now. Many times people forget they even offer the service. One of the downsides to the service is the fact that Sony only offers PlayStation 3 games, while some older PlayStation 2 games are offered for sale, but not on the service. Microsoft has been thrashing Sony with their offer of backwards compatibility games, as well as free copies of the games if you have the Xbox 360 game. Sony is prone to do, they come, as Sony is prone to do, they come out with something and fail to follow through with it. They advertise and push the implement, impending release of their new service, system, or offering. But once it's released, they don't know what, how to push it, push for growth. This could be why some people are hesitant to subscribe to PlayStation View because no one knows how long it'll be around. Mm. Sony's so notorious for that too. Yeah, it's a shame because that was kind of its strong point. Like no one else was doing that out right. of the three consoles. Like you, you had. You Let's had, just say uh, two because Nintendo wasn't doing a whole lot of anything. <laughs> right, it's true. But like that's one thing that Microsoft kind of lacks. Microsoft doesn't have a mobile platform. Right. But then again, Sony doesn't have a PC platform. So, But I feel that if Sony would – like the Vita. The Vita was legit. It's still the greatest handheld ever created. But they, they put stuff out and then go, eh. Yeah. It's almost like they have ADD. They, like They, they, they really just do, can't. Yeah. They can't muster themselves to, to do anything. Yeah, yeah, this is fucking crazy. I know. I, I I love my Vita, but yeah, there's just not a whole lot to it. Right. So, a sad tale, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> is it though? <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's um, favorite Star Wars character to hate, Jar Jar Binks. They've actually revealed what Me? his fate was. Misa, a stupid character. <laughs> oh. Seriously, what killed that trilogy for me? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I always, there's times where I go, you know, he wasn't that bad. And then when I watch it, I'm like, oh my God, turn it off. <laughs> exactly. Like, I just can't. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to read this one Star Wars Aftermath, Empire's End, the third entry in Chuck Wen Wendig's novel trilogy set after Return of the Jedi reveals the fate of the clumsy Gungan outcast Jar Jar Binks. According to Mashable, there's an, inter, there's an interlude chapter in the book that takes place on Naboo when we learn that Jar Jar Binks has become a street clown. A refugee boy named Mapo runs into Jar Jar while he's performing for some kids, and the, Gung, the Gungan explains the circumstances that led to his situation and why he isn't wanted. When asked by the boy why no one speaks to him, he replies, Jar Jar making some uh-oh mistakens, adding... I already hate that. <laughs> Disa, Disa hissing Naboo tink, I help the uh-oh empire. That was hard to read. <laughs> so you can I, read oh, the whole... I, oh, I almost felt the accent coming back on you. Coming back on you. <laughs> Jar Jar making some uh-oh mistakes. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> You can read the full interlude details Jar Jar's set of Jar Jar's sad fate next week, uh, sometime this week, um, when Star Wars Aftermath Empire's End releases on February 21st. With, I don't even know what the date is today. <laughs> um, today, basically. because it, it, Yeah, on the day the podcast is released, it'll be today. Right. In the meantime, blah, blah, blah. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, In the meantime, who gives a fuck? <laughs> I mean... If you're a Star Wars fan, don't don't act like you're not interested. Like you don't have to admit it, but don't act like you're not fucking interested. <laughs> you know what? I'm so, you know I'm a Star Wars fan, but I don't care. I don't like the character. So for me, it's like I don't really give a shit. I think for I think for those that read the books. For the for those that read the books, though, so they're probably already reading this trilogy anyway. Right. But you you know you'll look it up, dude. Don't act stupid. No, I won't. Look it up I, I will not. I will not. I will. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. You understand what I'm talking about? 
<laughs> uh, so this is the first time in weeks that we had a DC Cinematic Universe story that didn't involve Ben Affleck. It seem <laughs> it would seem that life in Hollywood seems to be turning around for Mel Gibson. If news reports are to be believed, it would seem that Warner Brothers is looking to court Gibson into directing the next Suicide Squad movie. Once you wrap your head around that, we will continue. Take your time. THR is reporting that Gibson is being recorded by the studio for the sequel, but they are quick to say no offers or commitment have been made. Variety has gone a step further and claimed that the studio is also planning to talk with Ruben Fleischer, Zombieland, Daniel Espinosa, Safe House, and Jonathan Levine, Warm Bodies. While fanboys are already circling around what kind of movie Gibson should do, let's take a moment to relax the fanboy fervor and think about it about this rationally. Given that this is the internet, this will make this will be this will make that request a very tall order. The odds of Gibson taking on the studio movie is slim to none. This is one of those stories that has a big DC property and a big name attached, so it gets hits. Bear in mind, Gibson has not has no, not kept his opinions of comic book movies to himself. Slash Films reported in May of last year that he was offered the role of Odin in Thor. He also told The Guardian what he thought about the current slate of superhero movies. Quote, some are good, some are kind of funny, Guardians of the Galaxy, or the first Iron Man, and some of them are like retreads. I mean, you can watch, you can watch them do Spider-Man five times. He went on to say yeah. about the current slate of films, there is a slight shift in film, but then again, I think all films are suffering from people not being able to to now open them with their names. It's a different kind of business these days. I think you used to get more variety of stories, films, and performances. You had more of a chance for a profound film experience that's not gone. I think that's been relegated to an independent world, but they have to do it twice as fast for half the money. Gibson's not wrong. Quote, I look at them and I scratch my head, he told Deadline about Batman vs. Superman. Quote, I'm baffled by it. I think there's a lot of waste, but maybe if I did one of those things with green screens, I'd find out different. I don't know. Maybe they do cost that much. I don't know. It seems to me that you could do it for less. If you're spending outrageous amounts of money, 180 million or more, I don't, I don't know how you make that back after the tax man gets you and after you get half of the exhibitors. What did, you, what did they spend on Batman versus Superman and they're admitting to? It's a piece of shit. Um, of course <laughs> of course some in the geek community would say that this is his chance to make a quality film the major the major stumbling block would be the fanboys that would scrutinize every piece of information truthful or otherwise and condemn the film before it was released i.e batman vs superman not to mention gibson is not a studio filmmaker he's a filmmaker like quentin tarantino who will usher his own scripts and film it the way he wants to not to fit into someone else's cinematic universe you heard it here first. Mel Gibson will not be directing this movie. Good. Because <laughs> it would get fucking weird. I, I, you know, I mean, there's still like, I don't know. I mean, some people are like, like hyped on it and thinking like, oh, what he would do. It's like, no, you got it. I'm, I'm kinda... That's the weird thing about Mel Gibson. No matter what he does, people always forgive him. Oh, yeah. He's one of those people that you just... I don't know, maybe because people remember him from the good old days. It, and he doesn't, to be honest, he doesn't fucking bother me. I don't care. Right. But it, it's just, it's odd how quick people forget. Well, yeah. I mean, and not only that, I think a lot of people tend to, you know, I mean, for now, it's been like, you know, anything with Ben and Affleck and Batman, it was like, now we're looking at something else other than, you know, him doing a him doing you know suicide squad it's like i don't see that as actually happening because because you know i it just doesn't seem like a fit right i mean i'll think of all the think of all the movies he's done you know outside of that you know that he's directed none of them would even remotely suggest this kind of a commercial property unless he was acting yeah. in it <laughs> I don't know. I just think um, I think it would 
it's interesting that he's attached to anything yeah. big. Well, like he doesn't, a, like I said, he's he an Oscar contender me. now. Right. Like he doesn't bother me. It's, it's just funny to me, <laughs> 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 you know, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So Kevin Smith making some moves lately. Yeah. Um, working on a new BBC America series based on two popular spawn characters. I'm actually kind of interested in this deadline reports. Smith is attached to direct, write and executive produce a show about Sam and Twitch, uh, created by Todd McFarlane. The two characters are NYPD homicide detectives who first made their debut in the spawn comics, uh, helping out the titular anti-hero, whatever. Um, (laughs) Due to their Fuck popularity, <laughs> yeah. Due to their popularity, they eventually received their own comic book series, where the duo go up against an occult and try to solve uh, several grisly crimes. Uh, quote, quote, quote. I bumped into Kevin Smith at Sundance, and he is beyond himself excited about this about the show. Said BBC America and GM Sarah uh, Barnett. Of course, you talk to Kevin Smith about anything, and he's excited. Hmm. I think that's one of that's part of his charm. Like he's so fucking excited yeah. about everything. Um, well, I mean, beyond, think about it. He's a fanboy playing in the playhouse. You know, that, that would be right. like any of us, you know, it'd be There's like no, him going, Hey Adam, would you like to, you know, come up with a Joker centric story? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be no, hard. <laughs> um, there's no other fucking, there's no other information on it other than the announcement. But he has been, you know, he's directed a few, um, a few episodes of Flash, Supergirl and Supergirl, Flash. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's not like it's out of, it's completely out of turn to see him do this. And I think he's got talent. I think he just needs to get something that he's going to be good at. And I like to see him in something a little bit more mainstream. Not to mention for people who were upset about um, Constantine falling off, this might fill that void a little bit because they do deal with the occult. Um, Mm -hmm. in a bit of a more comedic fashion, I would say, but still, um, it's, it's something, you know, so. And he's used to that with dogma and stuff. Yeah. So he should, um, he should, did you just say Catholicism was the, the occult? I mean, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just, you know. Hey, call a spade a spade, you know. (laughs) Right. Side note, uh, there's a guy outside. In the um, so outside my bedroom window, you can see the really shitty playground that this place has, mm-hmm. and um, there is a man out there um, who is just screaming "fuck" every five seconds, like he's really <laughs> angry. And I want there's this stuff like this happens frequently. Nothing violent, nothing out of control, right. but silly stuff like that. I remember my my wife asked me, "Why does this happen all the time? Just people acting stupid?" I said, "Because we live." In Section 8 housing, even though I don't get Section 8 because I make too much money and don't need it, um, but I did it one time. Um, and a lot of people have are financially unstable because they're unstable. <laughs> they're financially unstable because they're mentally unstable. <laughs> exactly. So that's what's happening right now. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there for everybody. A little glimmer, of, a little, a little glimpse inside the life of of Adam Riley. Right, the things I have to deal with on a day-to-day basis. <laughs> so, all right. So, why don't you kick off the comic news? Dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> we don't have a cool. We don't have a cool intro to that. Um, Marvel has announced via Entertainment Weekly a new monthly Spider-Man comic called Peter Parker: The Spectacular Spider-Man. Now, okay. A new Spider-Man comic really isn't news, right. but because it happens every fucking week. But we'll humor me for a second. Written by um, Chip Sadarsky from Star Lord and drawn by Abert, Adam Kubert. I, I fucked up my own name. That's kind of fun. <laughs> Adam Kubert um, from all new, all different Avengers. Uh, this series aims to provide readers with a more traditional Spidey status quo, while still reflecting current developments in Dan, Dan Slott's Amazing Spider-Man. According to EW, Spectacular will coexist with Amazing, but feature a more familiar New York setting and supporting cast. The series will make its debut in the form of a free comic book day one-shot in May. 
with the main series to debut in uh, June. I scrolled down before I finished the sentence. Hmm. Um, Zadar- Zadarsky spoke to EW about the connection between the two titles, saying, with this book, we're using the same Spider-Man in, continu- in c- continuity, but shifting the spotlight back to his New York City environment and supporting cast. But even though we're pushing to make it a more personal book, we're still going to have big adventures with ramifications that'll be felt in his other books. If I had like a true mission statement for the type, the title though, it would be have fun, have heart, have stakes. That's cute. Um, <laughs> Sadarsky also elaborated on Spidey's status as the perennial everyman hero. Um, quote, Spider-Man is kind of like when you're a kid and you go to camp or a new school and you think I can be a new person here, but you inevitably end up with the same problems because you're still, you know, the same person. <laughs> Peter can can be having a crummy time of things, but on his Spider-Man outfit, put on a Spider-Man outfit and feel like he can do anything. But inevitably, his Peter luck spoils things, <laughs> even as Spider-Man. And part of the fun of the character is seeing how he gets out of the holes he digs himself into. Um, so I was interested with this one just because... And, and it even says we'll still have big event. I kind of miss sometimes, especially with Spider-Man, there's certain heroes where I just want it to be that small scale. Right. I'm only dealing with one city, right. you know, and, and that kind of fit was so perfect for Spider-Man because I know he's a super powerful character, but he's not Thor. You right. know what I mean? So, so it was always more interesting to me to see him handle – um, New York and New York problems, you know, and, and they've, they've, exp- he's, it, and of course it's due to his popularity. Right. They've expanded him so much, you know, so it's, it's, I thought this was interesting to see something a little different. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool for him to get back to basis. Cause yeah, I mean, some of like, especially in amazing, it's, it was a pretty big story. Um, although lately it's pretty much been all kind of side stories to what's going on in in the clone conspiracy so there's not like one major story going on with that so it'll be interesting to see it kind of you know i guess in essence get back to basics right um so it was only a matter of time people it seems that warner brothers has been loving crossing dc characters with anyone else on their roster batman has been teaming up with teenage mutant ninja turtles and soon to be with the spirit but it seems that they will be teaming up with looney tunes DC via CBR did a very short press release for the crossover. Stay tuned. Jonah Hex, Yosemite Sam, Martian Manhunter, Marvin the Martian, Lobo the Roadrunner, Batman, Elmer Fudd. There is no news as to when this crossover will come out, but we'll see some pretty nifty artwork. You can actually see some of the artwork on the uh, lazygeeks.com where you see Batman's image with you know, a stylized Elmer Fudd crouching down. So there's some interesting stuff on there. So I'm kind of, huh, not sure about it. (laughs) I'm not sure if they're trying to make the DC characters a little more likable or the Looney Tunes character a little more gritty. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I think they're just, just, companies always go through this period of just like, let's mash everything. Right. You know, and, and you just have to wait it out <laughs> and then hope for the best. Mm. It's really I, – a mashup's cool when it makes sense. Right. When it, when it doesn't like make Mutant sense. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like, and Batman, right? No, that didn't make any sense. I thought it was cool because I liked both of them, <laughs> but it doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's right. the thing is that – and the Power Rangers and the Justice League, like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. But – it's cool to read, but the problem is, is when they keep doing it, you're like, okay, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, let, let's let's calm it down just a little bit, please. Because the thing and they'll is, go, they'll say the, no, and they'll do it five more times. Right. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that you do it too many times, and people are like, oh, another one, and then it does it loses its novelty or its like element of oh, that's kind of cool, you know. It loses its luster. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I still it. haven't read that. I still haven't read that Power Rangers one. <laughs> Speaking of crossovers, um, <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on, <laughs> I'm all, I'm all, I'm out of it. 
I'm just losing and you didn't, my mind. And you didn't even work today. I know. Um, I'm not even supposed to be here today anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> Deathstroke um, looks to be intent on reclaiming his mantle as the number one threat to the Teen Titans. Uh, this week, DC revealed that this rivalry will be rekindled in a new crossover storyline called The Lazarus Contract. Um, see, now this is a crossover that makes sense. Right. Because these characters have history, right. you know what I mean. So it's it's almost not a crossover, <laughs> to be honest. Right. Um, right, 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 right. As revealed by Comics Alliance, the Lazarus contract will play out in four comics shipping in May: Titans Eleven, uh, Titans Teen Titans Eight, Deathstroke Nineteen, and Teen Titans Annual: The Lazarus Contract Number One. I hate when they do this fucking trying to sell all the books. Yeah. Like, it just gets annoying. All four issues will feature covers from artist Mike McCone that combine to form one giant montage of Teen Titans versus Deathstroke goodness. Um, and they show it and it, it does look pretty fucking dope. Like it's a full, it's a full on bit. Like it's cool. They haven't done stuff like that in a while. Um, the crossover will be written by Dan um, Arbnett, uh, Benjamin Percy and Christopher Priest with interior art from Brett Booth, uh, Koi Pham, Carlo Pagulayan and Paul Pelletier. I guess. As the title suggests, the Lazarus contract is meant to harken back to the classic storyline uh, New Teen Titans the Judas contract. This time the contract will revolve around Slade's discovery that the original Wally West has returned. Slade sees that return as an opportunity to bring his son Grant back to life. And he isn't shy about carving a bloody swath uh, through the two Titans teams to get what he wants. DC promises that this crossover will have major implications for all three series um, with the solicitation for Teen Titans annual, the Lazarus contract number one teasing uh, quote, what does the future hold for the Titans teams uh, after this game changing run in with their greatest enemy? Find out here as we set the stage for the next era of Titans, Teen Titans and Deathstroke. Um, it's also interesting to note that this news comes on the heels of the announcement that Teen Titans, the Judas Contract, will be DC's next direct-to-DVD animated movie. Uh, it's shaping up to be a pretty huge year for Mr. Wilson and his teenage foes. Um, yeah, this is going to be a new Teen Titans movie. The Teen Titans animated, I usually skip. Yeah. I, I just don't. I, can't, I don't know why I can't get into the Teen Titans. I know, and, and I'm not knocking them. I know a lot of people love the Teen Titans, but I, I just, I just. It, to me, it's like a group of sidekicks. I just don't care. Right. I've never been keen on sidekicks. Like I don't like Robin. No. You know, like stuff like that. I just don't. Especially whatever. Damien. <laughs> Damien's such a dick. I hate him. But you know what's funny is he was the most well-written one. Mm. But he was still a dick. Right. Like you just didn't like him. You know. <laughs> uh. Well, Marvel is not wasting their time when it comes to promoting their next event, Secret Empire. <clears throat> Given the fact that they're halfway through February and the Zero issue is expected out in April, there is no time to spare. CBR got an exclusive look at Mark Brooks's cover for Secret Empire issue Zero. It has been shared that this event will be the culmination of writer Nick Spencer's work on Captain America Sam Wilson, as well as Captain America Steve Rogers. It even manages to use some threads from the whole Civil War II storyline. In case you haven't been following the series, Rogers is a Hydra agent after Red Skull used a cosmic cube to manipulate his origin. Although the man behind the shield doesn't blindly follow Red Skull, he believes that the Red Skull is only in it for himself and plotting to assassinate the Red Skull to bring the true origin of Hydra back. Tom Brevoort, Marvel's senior vice president, has described Secret Empire Zero as detailing the worst day of the Marvel Universe. Quote, we're not one, not two, but three separate events break out all at once, he told ABC News. Cap, as head of S.H.I.E.L.D., is able to mobilize forces on all three of those situations. And those three situations represent Hydra's first move. It comes off the block explosively right from the get-go. And it seems that right off the bat of the series, Rogers is finally unmasked as a Hydra agent and will have repercussions among all the players in the Marvel Universe. Quote, We'll definitely see an impact in our new younger generation of heroes, Brewer said, and a huge turn for them, a Watergate moment for them. 
they'll they will have to grapple with what that means and reset their heroism he explained you don't want to be bleak and miserable you always want to have hope and and be uplifting and that's the aspect of this story where the other characters in the marvel universe will come together um to come together for the zero issue will drop in april and the nine issue series will continue through august so i've been sounds like it's gonna be fun i've been reading that uh captain america steve rogers and it's actually a really good book i started when you know the the first issue came out and i followed it since and i've actually been really really um pleased with it because you get the whole back the backstory and how the back his origin is supposed to have been rewritten and that you know he's manipulating everybody and he has uh and even the the a comic version of the character eric selvig from uh Thor, the Thor movies is in it and is helping uh, Steve Rogers come together to um, to assassinate the Red Skull. So it's a pretty it's been a pretty good series. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, interested in seeing what happens with uh, uh, with Secret Empire. Right. I I don't read enough Marvel to really understand what's going on. <laughs> um. <laughs> that that whole revelation that you just said um in regards to why he was a hydra agent i was like oh yeah i mean okay (laughs) (laughs) you know like oh i get it now (laughs) but uh yeah that's cool um i know i know i know a lot of people were upset too they were really pissed off that that was even happening um so I mean, there was a whole thing online. Like people were oh, just yeah. like, "Fuck Marvel!" I was like, "Let them finish the <laughs> fucking story." I know you guys are freaking out. They kind of forget that's what it does, you know. Like they do something like that, so it gets everybody talking about it, and then eventually you're like, "Oh, that actually turned out to be pretty cool." Right. <laughs> uh, oh, what are you gonna? Do? Yeah. All right, and on that note, it bring that brings us to the end of the headlines. Um, All right. <laughs> get Maybe out. you just want to have sex with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, get out of my way. Did it, did it, did it. Hey. All right. So, our discussion topic this week is um, wireless companies are going crazy. They're going yeah. crazy. They're bringing back. Not, they don't know what the fuck they want to do these days. Oh yeah, I know. It's it's funny because they're bringing back the the plan that everybody wanted to get rid of. And uh, and here's the thing though is that so what was it late last year? I think it was that um, T-Mobile brought back their unlimited plan. Right. And it was it was unlimited, you know, but you had the uh unlimited video but it was like 480 so it wasn't even hd and it actually um and then you got throttled at a certain you know after you got what was i think it was like 26 gigs or something like that and mm-hmm. and then it kind of sat for a while and everybody was wondering if anybody else was going to do it surprisingly fucking verizon's the one that set this whole thing off because Verizon was really adamant about getting rid of their unlimited plan. And then they're like, hey, you know what? Guess what? We're going to go unlimited. So unlimited HD video, uh, 10 gigabytes uh, tether. And if you hit your, if you go above, I think it was 22 gigs, you get um, deprioritized. Not throttled, but if like you're at a tower that's congested, you just get moved to the back of the line. <laughs> um but um uh, and that based on region and where you're you know where you were getting your data from then T-Mobile decided to oh shit okay so this is this is what's going to happen see what had happened was is our bank account was set up uh um, right. to do this but see now we're going to go ahead and offer you HD video instead of the standard 480 but we're not defining what HD is either 720 or 1080 but in your settings, it's going to default to the standard, so you're going to have to change it to HD. Uh, they also do the tethering. 
and I think they gave you like 20, yeah, they still had the 26 gigs, and then you get to prioritized. Then of course, Sprint did their bit, which was a little silly, because nobody's really talking about what Sprint did, because everybody's kind of like, eh, Sprint was a little silly. Um, and then, <laughs> and then AT and T decided, oh, we're gonna do unlimited, but we're not gonna give you tethering. Um, also, it's gonna cost you a hundred bucks for the first line. Right. So it's like, wow, seriously, dude. Okay. So. Uh, and Sprint needs to calm down anyway, because they're fucking. <laughs> I know, right? They're the, they're they're not exactly the leader of the fucking pack. You know what <laughs> I mean? I know, right? So with all of that that came out, it was like every day somebody else was coming out with something. So Adam and I are pretty much just gonna kind of give you a breakdown of all four character of all four carriers, and then you know, so at least you can have some kind of sense in it. We're actually pulling from a really cool um, article on Gizmodo. So the first breakdown is going to be price per line. So all four carriers offer various pricing per line. Um, Sprint is offering 50 bucks a month for a single line. The price will go up to 60 bucks a month starting March, 2017. Sprint charges $40 for the second line, which means the price for two will, is now $90 and will go up to $100 in March of 2018. Sprint is also running a promotion that'll give you the third, fourth and fifth lines of service for free through March of next year. So that means if you sign up now, you get can get up to four lines of service for just 90 bucks before taxes and fees. However, after March 2018, that price goes up to $30 for the third line, $30 for the fourth, and $30 for the fifth. So that means that if you have five lines, that price will go from $90 this year to $190 next year. Right. So. So I don't even know why Sprint's even in this at this point. <laughs> um, I mean, it's true. It's like, wow, really? Um, T-Mobile, though, is going $70 for a single line, $30 for the second, and for lines th- and for three lines of service, T-Mobile charges $140 a month, $160 for f- a month for four lines, and $180 for five lines. Verizon will do $80 for a month for a single line, Two lines is $140 a month. Three lines is $160. Four lines is $180 a month. And five lines is $200 a month. So if you think about it, for five lines, it's $20 more than T-Mobile. Right. Which is really when you break it, it's like $200. It's like $20 more. Um, AT&T is $100 for the first line. Then costs $40 for each additional line. So two lines is $140 a month. Three lines is $180. AT&T is running a promotion given the fourth line of service for free. So also $180 a month. But if you want to add a fifth line of service, that's another $40 a month, bringing your bill to $220 before taxes. Yay. <laughs> so <laughs> um, according to them, um, their winner in this category is Sprint for a single line, T-Mobile for multi-lines. Also, Sprint has the great promotion right now for multiple lines, but those prices increased substantially in 2018. So buyer beware that the bill you pay now could double in 12 months. Verizon pricing is better than it was for some of its pre-unlimited plans, but it is still more expensive than T-Mobile or Sprint. AT&T has the price at the single, um, the highest price at a single line and multi-line levels. Personally, I don't agree with Sprint being the winner because you're only a winner for a year. Right. I would personally say it's either between T-Mobile and Sprint and that is only dependable on, you know, 10 to 20 bucks. Because T-Mobile is offering $70 for a single line. Verizon's offering 80 Now, the things, the upside to that is Verizon does have better coverage. And that's one. Yeah. That's the one thing that I've always liked is Verizon is expensive, but they have better coverage. And when you're dealing with five lines and it's 20 bucks between... 180 for T-Mobile and 200 a month for Sprint. I know the 200 idea where you think, oh shit, 200. Oh, but this is 180. It's really just 20 bucks. So Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a dick. Is it though? I mean, I I just I just want to bring up the main point as to my interests cuz I don't really give a fuck cuz I'm on prepaid and I stay that way. I don't really fucking care what anyone's doing. But 
the, the, the fact of the matter is, is these motherfuckers are out of their minds. <laughs> they have unlimited and then they make they make everyone feel bad for having unlimited. Like right. they say, oh, you want to keep the unlimited plan? Well, fuck you then. You can't get a new phone unless you pay for it at cost. Right. So kiss my ass. All right, fine. So then people are forced into these plans they don't want. And now they're like, hey, guess what? We have a new unlimited plan you should check out. I would be like, fuck you. <laughs> Well, it's like I did an I did a uh, an article on um, AT and T when I did about their their service going up, and I was like, you know, AT and T has always said that their biggest mistake when they offered data was giving unlimited. But here's my thing though, is that because we have we had AT T Mobile, which was almost going to be bought by AT and T. People remember that <laughs> that they were yep. going to be bought by AT and T. Then they just kind of reinvented themselves, and then suddenly, oh hey, we created competition, and so now we have you know we have more options, and it's kind of that whole thing of like, you know, this kind of stuff a lot. This is what is beneficial for the customers because before that, when everybody was getting rid of their unlimited, and you had to pay this and that and the other thing. And then it was kind of like, this is kind of bullshit. And then T-Mobile says, all right, you know what? Sprint couldn't buy us out. So we're just going to say fuck it to everything. And then you can do whatever you want. And then suddenly people started going to that. That changed the game. Right. So I, I think in a lot of instances, you know, it, you know, and, and believe me, you know, John Lee Jarre is, is many things, but you know, he's pretty fucking brilliant with when it came to that. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just, it's just funny to me because if people haven't figured out yet that these motherfuckers don't give a shit, oh, yeah. then I, I don't know what to say. You know what I mean? Like it's there. I understand it's a business and they're just trying to make their money, but fuck, don't be so blatant about it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing be at least a little chill, you know? Right. Well, that's the thing is, is that, you know, and this comes up with, I was listening to uh, another podcast and they were talking about this stuff and they were talking about the whole uh, data caps and stuff right. like this. And they're like, see, all of this stuff proves that data caps is bullshit. Like every, to have a data cap. Oh, because it reduces congestion. Bullshit. It doesn't reduce it shit. Just, all it all it does is it makes you uh, it uh, it gives you the say. Oh yeah, because of, because so many people are using this, we have to charge you more when, you know, you go over this. You know, we're setting the limits. Right. So, it's just an excuse to charge more money. Oh yeah, it's always been the excuse to charge. It's, more it's money. really all it is. Yeah. Like, and if people were tricked by that, that sucks for you. <laughs> you know, like it's. To be honest, like, and I have AT and T's prepaid, and honestly, it's world's better. There's nothing that the contract one's going to give me, other than the only thing contracts give you now are better phones for cheaper. That that's that's really it. There's there's nothing else. I'm on the same fucking network, you know. So I don't I just don't get it. I don't fucking get it, Steve. <laughs> you know. Right. So. You guys can keep um, keep on keeping on with that bullshit. <laughs> um, so for the uh, data you can actually use, Verizon and AT and T both put uh, twenty two gigs as the data limit per line. Op um, Sprint has an option of throttling at twenty three gigs, um, and T Mobile says they won't consider throttling your data until you hit twenty eight gigs of usage per month. Um, let's see. Um tethering in case you you actually tether which i know some people do um verizon T sprint and t-mobile have included 10 gigabytes of hotspot data with their plans uh t-mobile and verizon if you go past 10 gigs you'll be put on a three gig data 3g data after that uh that's not great but it's better than what sprint does sprints will limit you to 2g data speeds if you blow past the 10 tether, 10 gigs tethering limit uh, yeah, <laughs> two gigs. Jesus Christ. Um, AT and T doesn't allow tethering on its unlimited plan unless you have a quote unquote connected car plan that offers you one gig of data. Yay! Yeah. Um, as far as video streaming goes, um, 
let's see. T-Mobile will let you use the T-Mobile app to enable HD video. Otherwise, it defaults to a lower, lower resolution data. Uh, T-Mobile's binge on plan also means that certain video services, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube, are zero rated and won't count against your data limits. The cravat here is that if you use binge on, the video quality will be lower. Uh, Sprint's new unlimited plan streams video up to 1080p. Verizon put no limits on the video streaming, but it will count count, or, bleh, count towards your data cap. AT&T will default to a lower quality streams, 480, for its stream saver program, but you can turn that feature off in your settings. AT&T zero rates video from DirecTV now, so if you subscribe to that service, your video won't count against your data caps. Oh. I have that turned on. I don't think it works with the Windows phone though, but <laughs> on AT T they have like it just it just puts it on four eighty to save your data. Yeah. Like I don't know and a lot of people were kicking and screaming about that. I'm like, why is that a bad thing? Well the, like, you don't need full four K on your fucking five inch screen. That's the thing. Like, and that's the thing I've always kind of, you know, been annoyed with is the fact that, you know, when you're dealing with video on a small handheld device. Okay, right. maybe on a, on a tablet or something like that, 720 will look cleaner. But on your phone, four, you don't need anything f more than 480. I mean, you really yeah. don't notice a difference. I mean, you know, Riker's beard is not gonna look so much more, you know, textured in 720 from Doesn't 480. Doesn't it though? Okay, maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> Actually, that was a bad example. Okay, so Riker's beard looks amazing <laughs> in HD. I highly suggest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're look when you're watching the Star Trek: Next Generation, that's a Riker episode. Make sure you're watching that in 1080. That yes. that's just that's just a hard and fast rule right there. <laughs> hard and fast rule. <laughs> Trust me, it is hard and fast. Oh, when you're dealing oh. with Riker's beard, that's right. <laughs> um. So. And other notes that they had on here, T-Mobile's prices include tax and fees. So theoretically, it'll be lower than prices from other characters. You should also note that Sprint's pricing is only ap applicable for new customers right now. Existing customers should call Sprint to see if the new unlimited features, including hotspot and, and HD video can be added to their accounts. Lame. AT&T and Verizon generally have the best networks, followed by T-Mobile and then followed by Sprint. T-Mobile's LTE speeds are often as fast as those on Verizon, but if you're in smaller areas, you may want to visit the store first to get your sense of their area coverage. And if you're switching from Verizon um, to Verizon from another carrier, make sure your phone has the Verizon radios needed to connect. Uh, most modern smartphones, including iPhones and Samsungs, will, but if you have an older phone, it may lack the radio needed for the Verizon network. And the same is true of Sprint, so check the list to see if this your existing smartphone will work on Verizon's network. I think because they use the old CMA, CMDA network instead of the yeah verizon's a real pain in the ass if you um if you overseas because i had a lot of people um at my job we you know some of us go overseas a bit not me because i don't fucking want to um and they have if they have verizon phones are fucked like they have to get a burner phone yeah because they just don't do overseas yeah yeah that's that's always been one of the bad things about verizon is that but i don't travel much outside the country so i don't really give a shit I'm, I am uh, well world, traveled. Oh, I was going to say a world traveler there. You can't you can't see right now, but my pinky is up. My penis is up. Hmm. Well, Wait, no, I thought that was I thought that was a given, you know. <laughs> right. As it is wh while I'm recording at all times. Right. So. Yeah. So, so yeah. So there's your breakdown and all those plans. Personally. I mean, T-Mobile still has a little bit of the better price and plan, but Verizon still has a little bit of a better network. Um, so Sprint and AT, uh, Sprint just don't even bother. T-Mobile's weird. Like they always come out with these innovative things, but everyone's like, "Oh, that's cute." Like nobody <laughs> fucking cares. You know, I, I'm sure Sprint users care, but they. Well, that's the thing is, is that at at this particular point. If you're going to T-Mobile, you're probably already there. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't... I don't. People aren't really moving around anymore. 
Yeah, I mean, the only thing that I could see is people moving, and I've heard this too, that if, like, some people move from Verizon to T-Mobile because of the Unlimited. But, you know, I, I, I know there's some people now that are like, yeah, but, you know, Verizon does have better coverage, and yeah, it might be a little more expensive, but I can still get Unlimited with that. I may go back. You know, so, I don't know. It's just such a pain in the ass to move around these cell phones. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, you do what you got to do. You know, you do what you want when you're popping, as a friend <laughs> of mine says at work. Um, but it's, um, I don't know. I just don't fucking, you know. Like, we know you don't. I, I really I really want someone to give me a good reason why the contract plans are better than the prepaid phones. Other than getting a cheaper phone, getting a better phone on a on a payment plan. Well, I think the, the, the reason, the most of the reason is, is that the people do that because they want the ability to change phones. That's really right. what it comes down to. I mean, I'm, and to be honest, you know, you know, I, I, you know, I personally don't have, or I kind of, it's like, well, cause then if you're like, you know, if I pay the money to buy the phone, then I buy the phone and then use it whenever I need. But then it's like, well, then I gotta, you know, have this much money to buy the other one. For me, it's just kind of like, you know what? Like on the the Samsung device that I have, when I switched over from my iPhone, I got upgrade every 12 months. So I only have to literally pay off half the phone and then upgrade to the next one. Now, I don't right. have to upgrade. That's a thing. But, you know, it's like, well, if I'm eligible for it, I'll do it. So, you know. And then prepaid, you just buy a new phone. Right. For whatever the hell you bucks. want. Yeah, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's just it's just how people view it yeah like i i just don't i don't see i'm not knocking it i just don't see a reason well to me it's it's like well i don't pay anything down unless i want to you know right that, the, you know or pay but we're also we're, we're also talking to a person and i'm talking about me that was using linux because i didn't like people telling me how to use my computer like <laughs> i prefer the freedom like i'll pay like my phone's gonna be like 430 dollars so i'll buy it and then I'm perfectly fine, and I can I can do whatever the fuck I want, right. bitches. <laughs> you know, but I'm a baller too. You know, it's just whatever. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> How's that Windows Phone working for you, by the way? Uh, <laughs> why are you fucked up? <laughs> I thought we were friends. I thought we was the homies, mm -hmm. though. It's real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> And stay tuned for the uh, the away team podcast where you'll get that reference. Yes. All right. So on that note, I mean, to be honest, there's really no like, you know, people will say, oh, this is a winner. But it really depends. It really depends on what you're looking for. If you want something a little cheaper, regardless of anything, then obviously T-Mobile is the best way to go. If you don't mind spending the extra 10 bucks, 20 bucks or what have you, um, then you know, I'd say Verizon's the better one. Um, because for me, like for me, it's like I'm a Verizon user and I never have a problem with connection. You know? Yeah. So. When I had, when I had Verizon, it was, it was legit. Yeah. Like th there was never any issues with it. Yeah. Like I could never not connect to something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I also, I, I mean, I have, it also, it's very dependent on where you live yeah. too. Like Sprint, um, Sprint in LA, I found worked a lot better than here in Phoenix. In Phoenix, it's fucking shit. Like you, you just do, there'll, there'll be entire my, like five mile stretches of road where your phone just does not work. Yeah, like it's horrible out here. Um, AT and T is extremely strong here, but I've heard people say from other areas that AT and T sucks. So, I mean, I it, it's. I went from I went from uh, two years ago. I went on a road trip with my girlfriend at the time, up from L.A. to San Francisco, and literally through the stretch, like above Fresno to uh, to like uh, uh, Pleasanton, like near Silicon Valley. I I had Pandora streaming the entire time, like, like a boss. Like I never had any problems with the connection. So right. like it never stopped to buffer or anything like that. It just kind of, well, unless what, you know, Pandora does <laughs> where you're sitting there going like, shouldn't a song have started right now? And for no reason, it just is like, takes a little extra time. 
but yeah, like never had an issue. So Verizon is, um, you can't knock Verizon like for, for, for their, for their quality. Yeah. And maybe there's an area in this country where Verizon sucks. I don't know. Yeah. You let me know. You know. <laughs> All right. So I think on that note, we tech might check out our douchebags of the week. So my douchebag of the week, this is kind of a twisted, twisted web here. And this comes from the Huffington Post. So a Florida police chief wants to fire two veteran police officers after an internal affair investigation determined they had sex on the job and sexted each other in uniform. Damn right. <laughs> Jupiter Police Chief Frank Kits- Kitsaro recommended on Tuesday that Sergeants Amy Walling and Jason Van Steenberg be terminated for conduct unbecoming an officer, according to the Palm Beach Post. Whaling had been employed by the department for 20 years, while Vestenberg had been there for 17.5 years. An internal affairs report alleges that the two officers, who were previously in a relationship together, engaged in all sorts of questionable behavior. In 2015, Van Steenberg received oral sex from Whaling while on duty and lied about it to investigators, according to the local station WPEC-TV. Which, I mean, I mean, maybe he wanted it on the down low. I don't know. You know, that's... <laughs> Keep it on the down low. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know. Um, according to the inf- internal affairs report obtained by the station, Van Steenberg filmed the sex on Whaling's phone, and she later showed the 23-second se- clip to investigators. Wow, that long? <laughs> that's it? I, <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> Um... The same year, Van Steenberg took a photograph of herself wearing a SWAT uniform while exposing his penis and sent it to, uh, the photo to Whaling. An internal affair report obtained by the station said Whaling took a photo of herself exposing her breast while wearing her uniform t-shirt and sent it to Van Steenberg. Van Steenberg and Whaling started dating in 2012, which, which is allowed by the police department. Kurtz, were, Kurtz Rowe told the uh, Palm Beach Post, quote, we have husbands and wives working in the department. We are not concerned about the relationship. We are concerned about the performance as police officers, Cotsworp said. The department became seriously concerned after an April 2016 incident at a local restaurant when Whaling uh, bit a fellow officer and another person before striking another officer. Wow. You, uh, you out here biting, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> come on. Uh, the the disagreement stemmed from a Facebook message Whaling sent as it always as, does exactly it's always Facebook <laughs> <laughs> from a Facebook message Whaling sent Vastingberg's fiance detailing days and times they had sex after he became engaged damn that's fucked up yeah for that she was reduced in rank from sergeant to officer and given a thirty day suspension without pay. The Jupiter Police Department had issued a statement saying, saying that uh, Katsuro recommended terminating both sergeant based on the findings and a thorough internal affairs investigation. The release added, the actions of these individuals do not reflect the culture or organization values of the Jupiter Police Department. Whaling sure Vastin- yeah, I know, right? Whaling and Vastenberg and Katsuro have not replied to requests for a comment from the Huffington Post. The recommendation to terminate both officers has been sent to the Juniper town manager who will make his decision in March, according to uh, P- WPBF-TV. <laughs> never All sh- that sexy time. Yeah, never shit where you, where you work, man. That's right. I mean, that's, that's just... That's the cold truth. Especially when your side chick becomes that vindictive, man. And they always do. Yeah, they That's do. what people don't understand. Mm-hmm. Side chicks always want to be the main eventually. Yeah. Don't don't get it. Don't get it fucking twisted, man. <laughs> That's why I've seen so many people that, that they're like, oh, yeah, I got a good little situation going on. Yeah, sure you do, buddy. For how long? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, let me see how that works out. The, the, the real ones that get it sorted out are the ones that like they do one night stands shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're in it now. You know, I'm not saying that I do. I, I don't. <laughs> They're in and it out. Yeah, that's They're usually how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't go for a repeat performance. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. There's this. There's this guy at work that he cheats on everything that he dates, Jeez. and um, and he was like, yeah, you know, I said, look, I'm not judging you. Do what you want to do. You know, but I just, I can't, I can't flow with that. Like, if if you made, I said, it's more about 
like, yeah, it's about being committed in a relationship, but to me, it's about making a promise. You prom if I promise somebody something, I'm doing it. Right. You know, like it, it's just the way the way I was raised, I guess. You know, and I said, and honestly, is sex that important <laughs> that you're ruining everything else? Just to get off real quick. Like, come on. Right. You know, get your fucking mind right. That's what young people do. I'm or or I'm, older people who want to be young. <laughs> I'm not judging you, but I'm judging you. I'm not judging you, but you fucking up. <laughs> 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 All right. So I'm judging this dude. because this. <laughs> so am I. I read this one before. <laughs> this is the definition of an attention whore. Like, this person needs attention so bad. A Toronto man, thank God it's not American. Just just once, <laughs> it's not. You know? I know, right? And it's not in Florida, <laughs> right? I mean, we we uh, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Canada uh, <laughs> as we see this bullshit. A Toronto man wants a taste of celebrity, and he'll stomach anything to get it. This is on Huffington Post. You know they're going to try to be funny. Right. Uh, Noah Maloney, who Noah Baloney is what it should be. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Noah Maloney who posts YouTube videos under the tasteful and not gross at all moniker of dog shit <laughs> has vowed to eat a picture of actor Jason Siegel every day until the actor returns the well you can't really call it a favor the funny thing about this is if you're such a fan I'm assuming he's a fan of Jason Siegel which I don't argue that point because Jason Siegel's hilarious but if he knew anything about the way Jason Siegel is in his comedy, he would purposely not do it back. Oh, yeah. Just to see how long he would do it. And then he would make – if he ever – if you know he was a petty man and wasn't busy being successful, uh, Jason <laughs> Siegel would make videos acknowledging it and then at the end of the video going, but I didn't eat the paper. Right. So – Keep it up. <laughs> I, I would do that. Oh, yeah. Um, Maloney troll, posted, troll that fucker. <laughs> fuck yeah. Maloney posted his first video on Thursday. I don't know what Thursday is. Figure it out. And he <laughs> spends four minutes and 21 seconds chewing on Siegel's headshot. Huff, Huff Post has reached out to Maloney and Siegel, ten Siegel, <laughs> to get their reactions. But both have kept their lips sealed thus far. The complete video is above – or. The complete video is – it's linked in the show notes. Okay. You, you can get it. Um, but you can watch the best bits on the thing. So you see gifts on here of him eating – just eating. <laughs> like there's nothing even funny about it. He's just sitting there bit by bit, four minutes long, eating a headshot of <laughs> Jason Siegel. A black and white headshot, I might add. Well, which that's, means, that's what a headshot is. Headshots are all black and white. They're all in black and white? Mm -hmm. I thought they were being in color to make it look fancy. No. Um, and then he has to he has to drink some water because obviously he's eating paper. Um, now my his, my question is now is he eating actual like photo paper or is he eating like it doesn't look know, like tw photo paper like twenty pound white paper you know or it just looks like printing paper. Hmm. Which technically I can't I can't account for the ink, but technically paper is edible. Yeah. It's just – it's fiber. That's all it is. It has no nutritional content. It's just fiber. <laughs> don't be using the bathroom after he does, man. I'll just tell you this that. This motherfucker. I, but I don't know if the ink is edible. But it's – it's um well, it's not designed to be edible. But I don't know <laughs> if it's going to make him sick. Like cardboard paper, you can eat that technically. Um, there was actually a story a long time. This is in the 90s. I remember seeing it in the paper. Um for, for those who are unaware, they used to print news on big sheets of paper. <laughs> um, the Sorcery, they, you say. <laughs> it wasn't even funny, though. It's it really sad. And it was just some homeless guy just gave up because no one would give him food. He just started eating cardboard that he found. And he said he, he – I guess another homeless person, was, he was talking to him. And he said he was fine. He's full. It's perfect. He's he's figured it out, the secret. But he died from malnutrition because yeah, there's, no, there's no nutritional. There's no nutritional content, yeah. right? Like he he was probably shitting up a storm, but he wasn't. It was it was sad and just un, uneducated. You know, didn't didn't understand. But yeah. anyway, I don't know why I was reminded of that. But this guy um, is not does not deserve pity. 
<laughs> um, everyone, please go to his videos and just tell him about. No, don't actually don't, because that's what he wants. Don't go to his videos. <laughs> don't even view it. It's not even worth it. Right. As I click on the link, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see if he has anything else on there. Um, he has three playlists. One says one's playlist is Jason Siegel. And it's the him eating pictures thing. He also has the latest one. I guess he's getting a tattoo of Jason Siegel's name. Okay. And then he has two other playlists. One says not Frankie Muniz related. And the other one says Frankie Muniz related. So basically this is what happens when you get psychotics <laughs> of on, on the internet. And he um he has eleven thousand subscribers. That's the sad thing. Is he'll probably get like a million subscribers for this, and he'll make all kinds of money. Yeah. I don't like this world, <laughs> what it's become. Yeah. See, all you need to do to become famous, dude, be a jackass. Pretty much, you know, just be yourself, basically, but on more of a public hey. forum. <laughs> hey. <laughs> now you're just being a dick. Yeah. I know. It's like, yeah, <laughs> really, I really am. Uh, all right. Well, that is it for this episode. Please rate and review the show. Please review the show on iTunes as it helps us out immensely. And you can catch our back catalog. You can check it out on Stitcher, iTunes, iHeartRadio, as well as the website, thelazygeeks.com. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash thelazygeeks, or search us out on Twitter and Instagram by searching thelazygeeks, one word. You can find links to our social media hubs through our site, thelazygeeks.com. You can also find me on the interwebs on Twitter at a middle age geek, Instagram middle age underscore geek, or check out my blog, the middle age geek.com. You can find me <laughs> in Twitter on Twitter. Um, just hold it down. And that's pretty much it right now <laughs> for the time being, for the time being, yeah. you know, yeah. Until he gets out of that windows phone. Oh, <laughs> why you got to bring that up though? You know what I mean? Like, just don't be a dick <laughs> just saying don't know about any other way <laughs> all right and be sure to tune in on friday for our the away team podcast this week's episode elementary my dear data so that is it for us this week so until next time peace out <laughs>